evening, everybody. This is Robbie Falk from 247 Sports, Starkville Daily News, and I'm doing this YouTube thing. I have no clue what I'm doing. My background's plain right now. I understand that uh, is not aesthetically pleasing to everyone, but we will figure it out in time. I'm trying to do a, a live on YouTube, and YouTube's not allowing me to do that. I have to be verified, and my account has to be verified. It takes 24 hours to do all that. I'm just getting started on YouTube, uh, doing things beyond just publishing uh, press conferences and things like that in Mississippi State sports. So it might take some time before we can get to that. I'm going to figure it out. I want to get you guys involved on this and have a weekly live chat. If you guys have any questions, any things you want to talk about regarding Mississippi State sports, I want to do that with you guys. Um, I've really been looking forward to doing something like this for right now. I think I'm just going to talk about Mississippi State sports for a little bit. Um, there's a lot of things going on with Mississippi State. I think you guys want to talk about some of that stuff. So I'm going to talk about some things, and uh, maybe we can uh, get things going in the future with you guys getting involved, asking questions, and uh, having some conversation and some things like that. But for now, I'm just going to um, talk a little bit. I'll post this on YouTube. We'll post it on our website at um, – Mississippi State 247 sportscom We'll have a full recap of this uh, whenever we start doing live chats too. So if you want to go back and watch, we'll be able to do that as well. If you have any suggestions, if you have anything that you want to, to tell me that I should do to make this a better process or um, a better experience for you guys, by all means, let me know. I mean, I'm I'm open to anything. I, I'm just getting started. I don't really I don't really know. Um, the best way to do this stuff. I've done some Facebook Live before, and um, you know, I'd, I'd like to venture into the YouTube world here and, and do some things in, in YouTube land. Um, and of course, I want to improve the the experience. I want to improve the surroundings that I'm in right now. I don't have really have a whole lot of options. I have a three year old in the uh, living room watching TV. I've got uh, rain and, and a little chilly weather on the outside. <laughs> So we're, for now, we're just going to do this, and hopefully you guys can bear through it uh, as we try to talk Mississippi State sports. First thing I want to talk about tonight regarding Mississippi State was baseball signing day. That was on Wednesday, a uh, big day for Mississippi State as they signed uh, their, their baseball recruiting class. And this class is, is really good. I, I think this has the potential to be – Probably Chris Lamonis' best class since he's been here. It's, I think, 24 guys in this class. And you got a, a wide range of players from left-handed pitchers to right-handed pitchers to even a guy that throws with both hands. Uh, and that is pretty impressive. I, I don't think I've ever seen that in person. There's been a couple of guys that have come through over the years and, and done that in the, in the big leagues or in the minor leagues. But you just don't see that very often. Gerangelo... Shijinche, I think is his name, from uh, Florida. He's from a Catholic school in Florida. And this guy just kind of just came from out of nowhere on our radar. He committed to Mississippi State a few weeks ago, and it was just it was kind of, like I said, out of nowhere. He's a guy that throws mid-90s from the right side. Then he turns around and throws from the left side, and he's, he's hitting high 80s. I mean, that's hard to do for a lot of guys that just throw with one arm and just one, work on one arm. Uh, it, it's pretty impressive that he's able to do that. And, of course, he's a switch hitter as well, which I don't think he would hit on the next level. But, I, I mean, it's just, the, the amount of talent that this staff is bringing in and the type of talent that they're bringing in is just seriously impressive. And this guy probably will not ever make it to campus. It's it, it's not a guy that I think that as a state fan you should get excited about seeing pitch for Mississippi State for two or three years. But the fact that Mississippi State is – own players like this from Florida, from Texas, from all over the country that just about anybody in the country is after just tells you the, the type of brand that Mississippi State has right now in the baseball world. And they've had that over the years, but I think it's going to be taken to another level. I, I just I feel like the national championship was just a almost like a glass ceiling breakthrough for Mississippi State to finally get over that hump and say, hey, we can win a national championship at Mississippi State. I thought that was huge for the program to be able to do that. And 
Um, you know, this kid's just one of the few guys that Mississippi State has in this class that, that has a chance to be really special. The, the end of the class um, that, that's really kind of filled up after the, after, after the national championship is what's made it really impressive. It was a class that was ranked, I think, anywhere from 15 to 25 by by some of the uh, recruiting services uh, before the national championship. So then the national championship happens, and you have a former Southern Miss commitment and Ross Highfield from Madison Central. He decides to open things up in his recruitment. He had become a big-time catcher prospect at Madison Central. He opens things up. Mississippi State calls him up immediately, and he commits to the Bulldogs. That was huge. Hollis Porter comes in, um, an outfielder from East Central. We know just how um, great the talent has been there in baseball uh, over the years. Connor Pilkington came from there, ended up going to the uh, the Chicago White Sox. He's pitching in the minor leagues right now. Brad Cumbus, a two-sport star that's given up football, and he's focusing on baseball. He has a chance to, to uh, get drafted next year and be a big-time prospect in the MLB, and now Hollis Porter comes in, a guy that's bats from the left side, throws with his right, an outfielder, another big, strong kid. They just, it's just a different kind of athlete down there at East Central, apparently. I mean, you got some big athletic kids down there that can do a lot of things, and I feel like this guy's gonna be another one of those. Uh, Ernie Day, a right-handed pitcher from uh, junior college, along with Nathan Williams, another pitcher from junior college. Uh, Day came, comes from Iowa Western. Uh, Nathan Williams is from South Carolina. You, you're filling some spots here late in this process with some big, big names and some big talented guys. And then I thought probably the get of the class is shortstop Jet Williams out of Texas, former Texas A&M commitment. He decides to go to uh, to open things up after the coaching change there. Um, and Mississippi State was was one of his visits that he took. I think Arkansas was one of the teams that came after him, Tennessee, teams like that. And he took a visit to Mississippi State, and he was just blown away. And that's that's another big draft risk for, for Mississippi State there. But this kid gives off some serious Alex Bregman vibes uh, for me as, you know, not, not the biggest kid as a middle infielder, but he's got some serious pop. He can really swing the bat. Great defender. That's a kid you're going to have to sweat on, on uh, draft day. But – another big time talent that all you can do is pull these guys in and just hope for the best whenever the draft comes around. But if you have, you feel a lot better about having those guys committed and signed to you than if you didn't. I mean, if you lose them, you lose them. They got a lot of great players that are in this class that you can fill in those roles. But if you get them to school, then you've gotten a great player for, for two or three years. Looking at some of the rest of this class, I mean, you got some great talent in this class uh, the first couple of guys that got committed, I remember when these guys committed several years ago, Lincoln Sheffield and Colton Bradley from Hartfield Academy. Sheffield's one of the top left-handed pitchers uh, in the country, has some high projectability from the left side, and I feel like it's going to have a good career. And Colton Bradley, a, a good catcher prospect as well. Logan Forsyth committed very early in the process as well from D'Iberville down on the coast. Bryce Hubbard is a transfer, came over from California. He's moved to uh, to Georgia and uh, it's just going to add to that that room for Mississippi State. Dakota Jordan from Jackson Academy, former uh, Canton Academy star, multi-sport guy, committed to Mississippi State when he was at Canton Academy last year to play both sports. And now he's at Jackson Academy. I think that profile is going to go up for him. Mississippi State has a chance to pull him in for baseball and football, which I think is an increasing possibility. You got, um, you got some more in-state guys, McLean Ray from Tupelo, uh, Jackson Parker, a real under-the-radar guy that can pitch from the left side, play corner infield as well, uh, from Stringer High School. You don't talk a lot about those schools uh, in Mississippi, so he's kind of flying under the radar a little bit. Uh, Evan Sieri, a, a guy that I think everybody is going to know pretty soon, transferred in from Landrum, South Carolina. Not the biggest kid in the world. You wouldn't you wouldn't look at this kid if you're standing next to him and and think that he has the ability to throw in the high 90s, but that ability is there for him. I think he touched 95 during the summer. He's sitting around 91, 92, 93 right now. Comes in from from Landrum, South Carolina. Going to be playing his high school baseball at Starville Academy this year. Uh, his family moved down here to uh, you know 
work. I think one uh, his mom's working at Mississippi State. Uh, his dad's a military guy, and they wanted to get closer to to Starkville and or closer to Mississippi State and kind of uh, put their roots down here if they know that Evan's going to be here for a few years. But if he pops like a lot of people think that he is, that's another guy that you might have to sweat going into the draft. There's there's a lot of projectability there with this kid, a, a, an arm that could get up into the 97, 98 range pretty soon. Um, and, you know, he can play shortstop out there for Starville Academy this year. He can hit. I think this kid's going to be pretty special. Um, other uh, in-state guys, Will Gibbs from Jackson Prep is, is having a, a strong career. Brock Tapper over at DeSoto Central. Man, the talent that's coming out at DeSoto Central over the last decade has been incredible. Uh, Austin Riley, of course, Cameron James, Keegan James. Uh, so many talented players have come out of there. Spencer Price over the years, and that program's been really good to Mississippi State. Uh, of course, Austin Riley uh, jumped over co college baseball to go play for the Atlanta Braves. That was a great decision. He's a millionaire, and now he's a, a world champion. Um, looking at some of these other in-state guys, we mentioned Ross Highfield. We mentioned we didn't mention Austin Tomasini, his his uh, um, teammate at Madison Central, big right-handed pitcher, just adds to the the beef of this team. Um, Jay Murdoch, speaking of that, a corner infielder from Georgia, another big kid. Uh, you won't be hearing that uh, that mantra anytime soon about Mississippi State having uh, a bunch of little guys on the field. The class they just brought in that that has um, some really talented guys in it, like Slate Offord and guys like that. They got some big boys in that group. I mean, we're not going to be talking about uh, Mississippi State doing the bunting game anytime soon. Uh, and this group just continues that that trend for Mississippi State. And you look in the 23, 24, 25 classes, same deal. Aiden Fancher's another big boy. He can really send it out of the yard. He's put on some shows for uh, scouts over the last couple of years, um, hitting the ball out of the park, some serious pop in that bat. He's been in a lot of work to get there. So that, that's just some of the guys that are in this class. Ended up finishing, I think, my Baseball America fourth in the country, which is third in the SEC. That's the kind of talent that's coming in the SEC. But you start living in that range, you're going to start putting some more trophies in the uh, in the trophy case if you're Mississippi State. And I just think Chris Lamonis and this staff really are in a groove right now. The, the guys that they've put in the next few recruiting classes are seriously talented. That – the 24, 25, the 23 classes, they're starting to really pick up some steam here for Mississippi State. And a lot of in-state talent. I mean, the state of Mississippi is producing a uh, high percentage, high-level players out there. But it's not just there. I mean, this this squad's dipping into Georgia, Texas. They've really hit Alabama hard, and they're, and they're taking care of business in the state of Alabama. Um, you know, Florida, Tennessee, they got a kid from Michigan in here. Um, it's just it's phenomenal what they've been able to do in these recruiting classes, and I think that th this program's not slowing down anytime soon. They're in a great spot under Chris Lamonis. If you want to go look at these uh, recruiting classes, by the way, if you're a member of our site um, on uh, 247 Sports, we have a list pinned at the top of our baseball um, board, and I've got the 2022 signing class in full. I've got 23 commits, 24 commits, and 25 commits. So we keep up with that religiously over there. There's not that many people that have baseball, Mississippi State baseball recruiting boards or um, you know commitments. So we try to keep up with this as, as best we can. You can go over there and, and uh, check that out. And go check out, uh, I have a couple of stories on Evan Sierra and uh, Aiden Fancher uh, from Winston Academy. I went to both of their signing days on Wednesday. Go check them out, uh, if you will, and and read about those kids because uh, I think they have a chance to be really special in their time at Mississippi State, and uh, they're they're great kids as well. So go check them out. Basketball also uh, did their signing day on Wednesday, and Paul Jones is our uh, basketball signing guru, basketball recruiting guru, as um, as he is with football recruiting as well. And yesterday, big time pickup, four star Kamani Hamilton. A lot of a lot of people might recognize that last name, Tang Hamilton, that played for the Bulldogs uh, in the late '90s and uh, I think the early 2000s as well. 
that's his dad. And Kamani won a state championship last year, beat Starkville High School in the state championship game. 6'8", 215, real long, wiry, small forward. He can do a, he can do multiple things out there um, on the court, and he had a really big season for the Arrows last season. I got a chance to watch him in the state championship game against uh, the Jackets. Big-time get, I think, for the Bulldogs to add to a roster that I think is long and athletic. When you look at Mississippi State, we looked at them on Thursday or Wednesday night. We got a chance to see them uh, in their season opener, and that team is just so athletic. I, I can't wait to see what that roster looks like whenever uh, Tolu Smith and Rocket Watts get back. I think Rocket Watts is, is close to getting back. From what Ben Hallen said on Wednesday, he is maybe a week away from getting on the floor transferred from Michigan State, but so many really good pieces there for the Bulldogs. It's just finding everybody's role and everybody kind of meshing in because I, I feel like this team has the ability to go basically too deep. I think they have – they can go, you know, seven or eight guys deep into that um, that bench and find some players that, that add a lot to the mix. Cam Matthews was really good on uh, Wednesday night. Cam Carter, the freshman, had a really good game as well. And, of course, the usual suspects, Iverson Molinar and uh, Garrison Brooks transfer from North Carolina. I think those guys are going to be really good too. So, you know, Kamani Hamilton adds that, as does um, a Dr. Phillips uh, combo guard and Riley Kugel, who's 6'4", 175, kind of a, um, you know, good-sized guard. It's going to be able to help you. Jaquan Walton, too, also signed. That was a kid that Mississippi State recruited coming out of high school. He actually committed to Mississippi State initially before deciding to go to Georgia. And he transfers from Georgia. He goes to Shelton State Community College. That's where he is right now. 6'6", six, six, around 200 pounds, another athletic guy. Ben Hallen brings in some some really good athletes. And this is setting up to be a solid class. I, I like all three of these guys. I think they can help. I think maybe one or two more guys um, on on this uh, in this class could help you out might go to the transfer portal. You always got to uh, keep that in mind, that you're going to have some guys pop up in the portal like Mississippi State got with Shaquille Moore and, and Rocket Watts and Garrison Brooks uh, and also DJ Jeffries. So you always got to maybe save room for one or two just in case somebody you really want comes into the picture. So that is uh, b baseball and basketball recruiting. Uh, for Mississippi State, it was a, a really good day for for both programs, and there were some other teams too. I don't I don't mean to um, leave all those other teams out, but I just don't have the knowledge on some of those other programs like softball and places like that to really give you my thoughts on how the signing day went for them. Although softball apparently signed the number seventeen class in the country, I don't know how valid softball recruiting class rankings are. Um, a lot of people that follow it say that they aren't, but um, either way, it sounds good to me. We'll see what happens. All right, let's talk a little bit before we go about Auburn. A big football game for Mississippi State this weekend as they go to the Plains. A tough loss for the Bulldogs. They had a game against Arkansas last week in which I felt like they really left left a, left a lot of opportunities on the field. Um, and that's happened a few times this year. I mean, Mississippi State just has not been able to finish a, a few games. And you look at it against Memphis, LSU, and Arkansas now, it's really more about what Mississippi State isn't doing than what the other team is. Uh, I think State has an opportunity right now to be 8-1 and one this year. They should have beat Memphis, I feel like. They should have beat Arkansas. And the LSU game is questionable. You know, LSU was – was up big in that game and two or three touchdowns. But a lot of that was was on Mississippi State's side of things. They could have done better. In the fourth quarter, you know, if you don't try to leap over the shield that's blocking the punter, you probably do uh, win that ball game. You had all the momentum. State ended up losing by single digits, had a chance to win that game and couldn't do it. The Memphis game, if you take care of business in the second and third quarter and your offense continues to put the, the foot on the gas – you win that game too, but instead they let Memphis hang around, they let the referees get involved, and the rest is history. That Arkansas game, you miss, you leave nine points on the field with your with your field goal kickers, and it's prompted 
Mike Leach to call for some tryouts. We have people, you know, that haven't kicked in a while that are sending videos to Mike Leach. We have this club soccer team is getting uh, emails from the coaching staff to come try out. I think Leach said 40 plus guys signed up um, to do this thing. So, you know, we'll see what happens from that. But you have a really talented kicker and kicker and Brandon Ruiz out there that um, I think you're just going to have to rely on. I mean, you're just going to have to put the the game in, in his hands or in his cleats, I guess, and tell him to go uh, get over it and go out there and kick it. Now, I don't know. I don't know what's up with Brandon Reese. He's been hurt this year, and I can't imagine him missing a 23-yard field goal like that last week if there wasn't some kind of issue still um, with an injury. And I also don't think that Mississippi State. This is just me personally. I don't. I don't know if State would have taken him out of the ball game for a freshman for a game-winning field goal, but they did. And they put a freshman walk on in Nolan McCord and. Um, I think it might have been a bad snap. Somebody said it might have been a bad snap. I, I don't know. I never went back and watched it. But nonetheless, State missed three makeable field goals, and they lost the ball game by three points, and that was huge. They had a big missed call uh, on that drive, driving in for Arkansas to win the game on a fourth down. The game probably should have been over, definitely should have been over. Um, but they called a pass interference. Uh, Traylon Burks fell down. You know, there was some contact there from, from Martin Emerson, but I don't think they make that call if they don't see Traylon Burks fall down. Um, but that kept the drive alive. It got Arkansas. They would get inside the 10-yard line and, uh, you know, miss a false start on a touchdown run. But nonetheless, State State couldn't keep them out of the end zone, and that's why they lost the ball game. So now you come into this week where you have to go beat a team that you haven't beaten at Auburn since uh, 2015. They lost last time they went there. They lost badly uh, to the Tigers. So this is going to be a major challenge for Mississippi State. I mean, Arkansas, Auburn is playing uh, pretty well. Last week was not very good. I think they scored three points at Texas A&M, so they weren't very good in that game. But prior to that, I mean, had some big wins. They beat Ole Miss the week before. They were looking pretty good. And this is a team that plays really well at home. And they got a quarterback that plays really well at home in Bo Nix. So pretty good running game. From this group, they pass the ball okay. Uh, their defense is, is always solid. You know, Derek Mason is a great defensive coordinator. This is going to be a big challenge for Mississippi State. You know, I, I didn't pick State to win this game, and um, I, I picked Auburn. I, I'm picking Auburn 28-24, I think, right now, because I just think that you know it's going to be tough to win there. But I think Mississippi State's capable of winning this game. Uh, I don't think Auburn is that much better than them. I just I give them the edge right now being at home. But this is a game, if Mississippi State could come out with what they did in, at Texas A&M, come out in the first quarter, drive down the field, score a couple of touchdowns, limit what they do offensively, and you get that spark early in the game, you come out with some momentum early in the ball game, I think State's got a chance. But you've got to come out in the first quarter – and start dictating the pace of the game and dictating the game yourself. If you come out like you did against Arkansas and you have, you know, a turnover in the first half, you have a three and out, you let Auburn get up in that ball game, it's going to be tough. It, it, the game's at 11 a.m. Auburn's much better, I think, at night, but it's still a home game. But it's a game that I think if you can get up early in the ball game against Auburn, take their crowd out of it, you know, that's kind of a sleepy time. In the morning, nobody really likes 11 a.m. games. Take them out of the ball game and, and put some doubt in the mind of those players, uh, and get some you know some frustrations going on at Auburn. I think you got a shot, but State's got to come out and play really well. And you'd love to go ahead and win this game and have a chance to to beat Tennessee uh, State next week and and get to uh, seven wins already and have a chance for eight against Ole Miss, but. It's really amazing when you talk about Mississippi State this year and how many opportunities there's been to win more games. I mean, there's only been one game this year that they just haven't been in, and that's Alabama. Um, you know, you could be looking at this team, if State makes those plays, you could be looking at this team as a double-digit win season. And that's amazing. And that tells you how close Mississippi State is to getting over the hump and being a contender in the SEC West. I mean, they're not that far off. I, I feel like this program is moving in the right direction. I like what Mike Leach is doing. I like where Mississippi State is. It's just about 
finishing and doing things the right way in all three phases. If they get the go, if they get things going in all three phases, then I think this team has a chance to be really good. So, all right. Well, I'm going to cut it off there. I think 25 minutes is good for now. Uh, you know, guys, give me your feedback. Uh, if you have any feedback, positive or negative, you know, I'll, I'll take it. Um, just let me know what you guys think. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, uh, Robbie Falk. I don't really know what, I don't know how to, I guess you just type in Robbie Falk and you can find the channel, but, um, subscribe to, to this channel. Um, and, and, you know, just let me know if you have any, anything that you would uh, like me to talk about. If you have any other suggestions or anything like that, just, just holler at me and let me know. But, uh, like I said, don't forget to subscribe to that channel. Um, also go, don't forget to, uh, subscribe if you don't already to Thunder and Lightning, um, our podcast, myself and Brian Haydad, we have a, a daily, uh, podcast during the week talking Mississippi State sports. And we'd love to, if you don't listen to that already, we'd love for you to subscribe and listen to that as well. And, um, we'd also love to have you as a, a subscriber on our website, um, Mississippi State 247 sports.com. Um, I feel like it's the source for Mississippi State sports on uh, this beat. Uh, we're the only place that covers recruiting uh, regularly on a daily basis. With Paul Jones and Steve Robertson are two of the best uh, in the business uh, that we have, and both of those guys do a great job covering Mississippi State sports. We cover as much as we can on this beat, and I feel like we have a, a great crew there, and we also have a great community of uh, subscribers too. So come check us out there. All right, for now – I'll plan on doing this again next week. We'll talk about Mississippi State sports next week. Hopefully, I can get the live stream thing figured out. If I can't, we'll do this again, and we'll try to just figure out a, a better way if, if we can't do that. But I appreciate uh, you guys tuning into this. Um, and like I said, just uh, let me know if you have any suggestions. So other than that, we'll catch you down the road.